Let me tweak my example one more time. I'm still gonna retain the idea of having these four different independent events, but now the question is, how many ways can I reorder the letters of the word form? So note that there's four possible letters. So if I think about the different possibilities, it would be something like this. I, I could have form exactly. That's one way I could reorder them. It's like, I don't reorder it at all. But I could also flip the orders in a bunch of different possible ways. So how can I do this computation? Well, I'm going to count the number of possibilities for the first of these. And the idea is this. Because I've got four letters, F, O, R, and M, there's going to be four different ways that I can put something into this first slot. So if I'm counting out all the different ways, the first of them has four. The second, however, let's think about that. Now there's four letters, but the first of them, the M, has already been used up, which leaves me with only three possible things I can put in the next slot. So I'm going to say that there's three possibilities for the second. Now I've used up two of the letters, only two remain. So for that third slot, I have to put one of the two remaining ones. There's only two different possibilities. And now I've used up all three of my letters, so there's only one remaining, and I'm forced, I have to put it into that final spot. So then the number in my sample space, the number in all the different possible ways I could write out this letters of form in some new order, is going to be four times three times two times one, or in other words, four factorial. Note, by the way, that in this computation, I'm demanding that there were no repeats, that I can't go M, 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 M as a possibility. It has to use every letter exactly once as I fill it out. Now, I want to make one note about the idea of independence. Because it's true, for the second stage, we've eliminated some letter in the first stage. So there's not four possibilities in the second stage, there's only three. But it's independent in the sense that it didn't matter what letter I chose in the first one. It didn't matter whether I chose an M or an R or an O or an F for that first one. There was always going to be three possibilities. Regardless of what I chose, it was going to cut it down from four to three possibilities. This is the sense of independence that I mean, that the number of options is still three here, regardless of what I chose in my first one. Now, this problem is a little bit simplistic for the following reason. Notice that there were four letters in my word, and that there were four possible spots I could split them into. So let me take almost the same problem, but I'm gonna make a slight change to it. I'm gonna instead ask, how can I reorder, without repeating, four of the letters, but now from a longer word, from formula? So indeed, something like the M-R-O-F is a possibility, but there's others as well, right? This is one like A-O-L-R, it uses more of the letters, but because there's only four possible spots, that's all I'm asking for is these four spots, I'm never gonna put in all of the seven different letters from formula. So what we wanna figure out is how can I determine the number of ways, how can I count the number of ways that I could slot four different non-repeating letters into these four spots? So if we think about the first one, the, the first entry, there's seven letters in the word formula, so I have seven different possibilities. Then for the next one, we've gotten rid of seven, there's six left, there's six here, five and four. Or in other words, I can say that the number in my sample is gonna be seven times six times five times four. It's very similar to what we previously saw, which was four times three times two times one. It's just that before we could call that a factorial, but here, this is not a factorial of something because it doesn't go all the way down to the one. It's just seven times six times five times four. Now I'm gonna do a little algebraic trick. I'm gonna multiply and divide by one. I'm allowed to do that, right? But I'm gonna multiply and divide by a slightly weird form of one. It's going to be three times two times one divided by three times two times one. The, the three times two times one cancels, and so I am just multiplying by one. I haven't made any changes. But the reason why I do this is that now I can represent this formula for the number in my sample space by factorials. In particular, I can say on the top here, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, that's seven factorial. And on the bottom, I've got three factorial. So 
in this case where the number of letters differed from the number of slots, that what I got was the division of two different factorials. This general construct where I am picking in an order that I care about some number, in this case four letters, from a larger set, in this case seven letters, that is referred to as a permutation. And this formula that we have for the number here has a general formula for permutations. So we're going to say that a permutation is where I'm picking R items from N possibilities. I don't repeat my different items, but I do care about the order. So that's what a permutation is. Four items from seven is our previous example, where I slotted them in, I didn't repeat, but I cared which was first and I cared which was second. I cared about order. Then the formula that we have can sometimes confuse students. Notice how I have a P here. I don't mean probability. I mean pick. This is my name for picking a permutation, not something about probability. This is a counting exercise. So what I can say is if I'm going to pick out R items from N items, then the formula is as N factorial over N minus R factorial. So in the example that we were just looking at here, notice how we said it was seven over three, but that three down here, that, that what we have here is that three is the same thing as seven minus four. Or in other words, it's equal to the N minus R. So indeed, I think seven factorial over seven minus four is three factorial. That's exactly what we have. So this is our general formula for the number of ways that I can permute R items within N items.